In this video, we will discuss several lawn care tips that can help you keep your lawn healthy and looking great year-round and for years to come. The biggest threat to a beautiful lawn is a lack of water. New sod can die off completely if not watered daily during warmer months while its roots are trying to become established. Once your sod has taken root, it's recommended to water with sprinklers once a week, applying about one inch of water during periods of little or no rainfall. The goal is to hydrate soil up to a depth of about six inches with intermittent periods of heavy watering. This watering schedule will vary depending on soil and weather conditions. The best way to determine how often you need to water is to check the soil in landscape beds every few days and water when the soil becomes dry. To test how thoroughly an area has been watered, go back about 15 minutes after watering and part the soil with a spaded shovel. If the water has penetrated 6 to 8 inches into the soil, no changes are needed. If not, increase or decrease the amount of water applied in the next watering period and check again. Make sure to check several areas in your yard. In some situations, such as on slopes and heavy clay soils, the water may need to be added more slowly to reduce runoff. Run the sprinkler alternately on for 10 to 15 minutes and off for 15 to 20 minutes until an inch of water is applied. In time, you will develop a watering regimen that is satisfactory for your soil. In the event your sod turns brown in places and crunches under your feet, it is likely died or is dying due to lack of water. So long as the roots are established, your sod will regenerate if you establish and maintain an adequate watering regimen. If you allow your sod to die before the roots are established, such as around a newly purchased home, it may never grow back and will have to be replaced. Watering sod is part of homeowner maintenance and sod failure is not a warrantable item. To promote rooting and help sustain a lush, healthy lawn, we recommend using Scott's Turf Builder Annual Program, which consists of four products formulated to be applied in early spring, mid to late spring, summer and fall accordingly. In addition to these products, we recommend applying Scott's Weed and Feed in the spring and winter seasons. These products are applied using your choice of broadcast, rotary, or drop spreader. Pre- and post-application wetting instructions vary with each product and can be found on the product label or on the product page at scotts.com. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully. The vitality of your lawn also depends on your soil. If your soil is lacking certain nutrients, your lawn will not be able to grow to its full potential. Many people have soil samples tested only when plants are in trouble, but the time to test and amend your soil is before the problems occur. Soil testing will provide you with information you need to treat your soil so your plants will flourish. The LSU Agricultural Center offers a routine test that provides ratings and recommendations for fertilizer and lime or sulfur to correct pH if needed. For more information, visit the LSU Ag Center's website. Mowing also has a profound effect on the way your grass grows. Mowing at the appropriate height is key to preventing damage and reducing weed encroachment. Newly laid sod should be cut at the highest setting on your lawnmower until growth rates become even across your lawn. Lawns with established root systems should be cut to a height no lower than 3 inches. A general rule is to mow before the grass becomes 1.5 times as tall as the cutting height of your mower blade. For example, if you plan to cut at a height of 3 inches, mow whenever your grass reaches 4.5 inches tall. If you find proper watering, trimming, and soil management is not enough to reduce weed encroachment, applying herbicides may be the next step. Your choice of herbicide will be dependent on the type of weeds present. Selective weed killers are better for broadleaf weeds because you can easily spot treat your lawn. Non-selective weed killers can be used for grassy weeds, but if not applied carefully, they can kill other plants as well. Certain grassy weeds, like crabgrass, have their own weed controlling products on the market. When using herbicides, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully. We hope these tips will help you maintain a lush and beautiful lawn for years to come.